just think if it was possible to be confident, focused, and motivated in specific situations where you needed to be. Being able to perform at our best, be at our best, be confident, focused, as and when necessary. The technique we're covering tonight gives you a process that you can use to be at your best at the right time. So pretty much like the light switch, you can switch it on as and when necessary to be in it. One of the powerful, most powerful ways NLP works is think of present state and think of desired state. Think of where you are mentally in a certain situation and think of where you want to be. In the present state, we have a desired state. And we've got all the resources we need to get to that desired state. Okay, you have all the resources in your mind that you need to get to that desired state. We're going to cover a very powerful resource tonight, which gives you a process step by step, which you would probably automatically without even realizing it, which your mindset in a place you want it to be at a specific situation. Okay, why learn to control your state? Well, would it be useful to you individually? Or would it be useful to you to help friends, family, as a coach, to help your clients, your delegates, to be able to be in the right state mentally for an interview, for a meeting, for a presentation, for a difficult meeting, for a sports competition. Just give me a, a show of hands as to whether it would be useful for you to be able to switch your mindset into the right state at the right time. Of course it would. And you could do this process with someone else as well. It's an invaluable gift that you could give to someone else. It could be a driving exam. It could be for an interview where 100 people go for one job. Now, of those 100 people, they possibly might all have the same level of skill, yet the person who can perform on the day is going to get the job. And that might be just momentarily what goes through their mind at the right time. The most talented, the most skillful person doesn't always win. They don't always get the job. They don't always become the most successful. So people can manage their state at the right time, which is key. So whatever you do, being able to manage your state is key and is fundamental to succeeding. By doing this process, you will be able to do that with your own mind and you'll be able to do that with other people as well. I've used it personally in business and I help people in business, prepare mentally, in sport, as a radio broadcaster myself. I use it to get in the zone. <coughs> What became paramount to me when I first got into radio broadcasting had a colleague of mine who, whatever was going on in his life, whenever he turned up to the station, he could switch on to where he had to be. And I thought, how does this guy do it? And he didn't deliberately have an anchor, yet he had a process in his mind. But whenever he sat in that chair, he would turn it on. And it'd be exactly where he had to be. And we all go through life, you know, we all have ups and downs. I don't care who you are, we all have ups and downs. That's a fact of life. It's how we handle situations is key. So you get in the car, you're driving to an interview, someone calls, you're texting, you have a bit of bad news, and you're not in the right frame of mind. This process can get you to where you have to be, which is key. And through life, you're going to have certain things that happen along the way. And the key thing is to be in the right state at the right time. But also, even from specific to this, being in a positive state of mind is a better place to be. Being able to switch on to a more positive resource, I think you'll all agree, is a nicer, more pleasant place to be. So whenever you're in a state where, for whatever reason, you find it difficult to break out, you can use this process we're going to cover shortly to snap out of that thought process, which can be debilitating for some people. How do we use anchors? Well, I'm going to give you some examples of common anchors. Visually, logos. Think of big corporations, their logos. They attach anchors to that. If you think of logos of the major corporations, what goes with the logo? There's music, there's singing, there's dancing. Think of a bank advert, and you'll see all the things that go on in the background. 
They're creating an anchor, an association for that logo. Okay. A soft drink isn't going to tell you or market its drink based on what is in the actual drink itself. They're not going to say, well, if you buy this, you're going to get carbonated water with God knows what chemicals are inside and some teaspoons of sugar because that would create a negative anchor. They will get a pop star singing and dancing who probably doesn't touch the stuff but to create a positive anchor for you. And the next time you drive past it, or possibly your kids see that, they'll have an association. That's got to be good. Because such and such drinks that, or it endorses that. And it's an anchor, a visual anchor, auditory anchor, music. Think of uh, a time that you might have been on a holiday when a song played, and you go back to that time. The auditory anchors, ringtones, accents, familiar voices. All these things are anchors. Think of your mobile phone. The ringtone will, will more than likely, you see people with mobile phones who actually have their own ringtone, their own music, to get to a certain state of mind when they take the call. People have music these days for their, for their mobile phone. Kinesthetic, anchors are powerful too. Clothing, exercise, a touch, tap of the shoulder, for example. They're anchors, and I, I sometimes tell people who are going for an interview or who are going to do a presentation or meeting, put an item of clothing on that makes them feel better as an anchor. It's a start, it's a positive way to feel better. Taste as well. For example, vinegar, garlic, lemon, chocolate. So you might be eating a chocolate that you ate on a holiday somewhere at some point and it takes you back there. So there's also a taste and smell too. So you might be walking down the road and you smell the uh, smell of fresh bread and takes you back to when you were back at school as well. So they're all anchors, associations. Now, one of the best things about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, it gives us a structure to set one of these anchors up or fabricate this for the anchor to work for you. Okay, so you can build an association in your own mind or someone else. So you can use this in a fabricated way to get the best out of yourself in a certain situation fairly quickly. And you'll probably already do some of these things already without realizing it. You'll probably already have your favorite song as your ringtone on your phone. You'll probably already have pictures on your wall or on your screensaver that give you a good association. So you probably have these. You'll probably feel a certain way when someone taps you on the back. So you, you will possibly already have these already. Certainly some of the best athletes I've worked with who haven't come across angry have these already without even realizing it. Yet when you tell them what it is, they formalize it and it helps them to get more better performances. Now the steps and the four key steps that will cover the structure uh, shortly are eliciting a powerful desired state. We covered a few minutes ago present state, desired state and the resources to get there. Present state desires and resources to get there. Okay, now we want to elicit a powerful state that's appropriate in that situation. So if it was to be calm in a certain situation, then you'd choose that. If it was to be confident, then you would choose that. What we do afterwards is we provide the stimulus as the state. What we do afterwards is we provide the stimulus as the state changes. Okay, and we'll go into that shortly because that's part of the step-by-step -step process we're going to learn or reinforce learning in case you've done it before this evening. And then once we've done that, we bring the state back to baseline and we test the anchor. One of the key things that we need to have in place is a very powerful elicitation script. Okay, within the handouts that I've given you, is a structured process we're going to cover shortly how you would anchor yourself or someone else fairly easily, fairly quickly in a certain situation. Now, within that script, what's important when we talk about state elicitation is to be able to choose a specific time or a specific association. Now, I'll put this across to you now and we'll do a basic elicitation. Think of a time when you were totally confident, or happy, or felt great. Just think momentarily of a time when you felt really, really confident, really happy, you felt fantastic. Okay. As you begin to think about that, 
what we do, and the term, just relax. As you go back to that time, what I'd like you to do is just re-experience that time like it's happening in the here and now. Just relive that experience. Notice what you see, what you heard, and what you felt. Any feeling, any sound. And really re-experience that time like it's happening in the here and now. And just feel an association. Actually experiencing it like it's happening in the here and now. Notice any people around you, any colours of the clothes that they're wearing, any colours that you're wearing, any sounds, any comments. Really re-experience the situation. That's an elicitation. That's how we elicit a emotional state. Okay. Was everyone able to connect to the experience? Okay. Was everyone able to connect to the experience? Okay. It's that experience that is appropriate, those feelings that are appropriate in the context of a certain situation that are key. That's the important thing. Okay. It's important to have the right state at the right time. Okay, so if it's confidence that you need, then it's confidence that you go for. So the key thing is, is to experience the right state. That present state, what would you say your present state in general is in, in certain situations? You don't feel so good. And how long does that last for? It depends when I was very truly. Depends really. Yeah. It, it doesn't last too long now, I don't think. I think I'm coming back again and then you start feeling you know, it. Things are getting lighter. Maybe a day, I don't know. Okay. Okay, so we'll give it a. Okay, 
and really, really deep experience of what's happening in here and now. Notice where you are, what's going on, how you feel, and as soon as you get just over that peak intensity, you can begin to release your anchor and just come back to the here and now in your own time. two or three more times to stack the anchor. So the first thing is to design specifically <coughs> a certain situation if possible, then choose a feeling, then relive the experience. Make sure you choose an anchor. So for the exercise, we're going to be thumb and finger. It can be anything. And I will show you later other things that we can do to actually anchor. The key point is at the point that we start experiencing a level of intensity of probably say 8 out of 10, that's when we press our anchor, hold for 5 seconds, to 55 to 15 seconds, hold for 5 seconds, 15 seconds, and just release once you get beyond peak intensity, and there will become a neurological connection with the kinesthetic action and the actual feeling. Just like when you watch TV and you see a logo or you hear a song on the radio, it doesn't take long to build a neurological connection, kinesthetically. Okay? I'm going to go through that one more time, or a couple of more times you can, please. So once again, I want you to relive a situation when you felt really happy. So just close your eyes, relax, and let yourself go and go back to a time, or that time when you felt really, really happy. Notice what you saw, what you heard, and what you felt, and what it was like to experience that. Once you get to peak level, hold, that's good. And just really, really the experience and feel the intensity. Let it go for every cell of your body and magnify it. Once you get beyond the peak intensity, you can release. You can come back and your thing. Okay. And we'll do that again shortly. What we do as well, it's important to break state. One of the ways to break state, so we'd ask the person to think of something different, or ask them to think of their phone over backwards for time, please. So really relax and let yourself go. Just re-experience a time when you were really, really happy. Notice what you saw, what you heard, and what you felt. Okay, pressing your anchor. And really let the feelings intensify for every cell and muscle in your body until you get to just beyond the peak level of intensity and you can release. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, what we can do, having stacked the anchor, is one of two things. We can then test the anchor by pressing it to see if there is that neurological connection building. Um, so we can test it. So if you were to press that, do you feel a neurological connection building to that? someone and say, okay, uh, let's imagine being in a situation where you're going for that interview, that presentation, or you're feeling that cycle of not feeling so great. Imagine pressing your anchor and see if it breaks that cycle. Okay, so you can future pace, which is a powerful process as well, to see if it's working in that situation, uh, which is key. Thank you very much for having me go. I really appreciate you coming out there. that were non league and I brought in our team to a team that were in the non league it was a big part of what they did and took on board and here's a guy you've probably seen in Tappy's sport 
him and Gazzard, is about to take a free kick in a big tournament, Challenge Cup, that is for him and Okay. So I wanted I want to challenge, I wanted to test myself in that situation because I felt I worked some of the best performers going. I thought, can I do this in a non-league? Um, and it took me an idea how it should be on the training ground. That's me, I'm myself. <laughs> a heat park. <laughs> Recognise. Yeah. So I think I'm a mad person in the park. There you go. Um, and, and I use the actual post to demonstrate that. So that's the tap of the foot. And we sort of replicated that. And the key point is the right state at the right time. The person, the client has to decide what is right for them. It's no good me telling someone confidence is what you need. It's about what you need and what your client needs, which is key. So ask them what you think is a problem. You know, it's just like going for a job interview. If can I get the job? If I get the job, I'll be able to pay the mortgage, I'll be able to go on holiday. So you've got all these things going through your mind. Yet when you're taking that free kick, you've got to think of the process. Think of the outcome that's going to the world and make it even more difficult. You go for that interview, you've got to think of the process. You go for that presentation, you've got to think of what you know, the process. Take a free kick, you've got to think about the technique, the skill you can do. So the tapping of the foot is the association to the mind you want to be in when you strike the actual ball itself. Because you can't affect anything else in your life at that point anyway. So there's no point thinking about anything else other than the process of taking that free kick or that interview or that uh, presentation. So the key was is the ankle was tapping of the foot, association, and then strike and obviously get a positive result. Now, I'd like to think that it had uh, some effect uh, within the team. I, I, you know, I'm not claiming NLP was the be all and end all. There are things that might be as well. But in saying that, the challenge was, was to take a team um, that hadn't won anything for a long time and were non league players and see what we could do. We won a, a big tournament and some players went on to do some, some good things. So, sorry. I was just going to say, sort of. How, how do you measure the outcome of this? How can you tell whether this anchoring is actually benefiting the person? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question, actually. Unlike a physiological event, like a 100 meter sprint, you could do training in the gym and say, okay, that training has got me from 10 <coughs> seconds for 100 meters to 9.9. .9. How you would measure outcomes is based on you and your client, if you're a coach, or yourself, based on what you're aiming to achieve. What is that you want as an outcome? We talked about present state, resource and desire state. Having the desire state, what would it bring to you? What outcome would you achieve? And how you would quantify that is difficult in the sense to know how much of what you did made an impact. Yet, if the person you work with goes away and gets that job, delivers that presentation, scores, 10 free kicks when the season before they only scored one, they're probably not going to come back and get fired. Or even so, if they go in there and give it their best, and it wasn't to be, yet they felt they gave everything they had, most people would hold their hands and say, well, actually, give it all I had. I was in the right state. I probably need to improve in those areas. So the answer to your question is, psychologically, it is harder to quantify things, how much of an improvement or how much of an impact you had. Yet what I would say, be very clear about the outcome your client wants to achieve, which is really important, really significant, okay? And I would say that, in my experience, certainly, not too many people are gonna come back and complain if they actually achieve a positive result, or say improvements. If you don't really understand their field, or what they do, ask them, what would mean an improvement for you? Okay, could be delivering a presentation to a number of people and achieving so many sales, so really be clear about where they are and, and what they want to achieve. Have quantifiable targets, and that'll help you as well, help them get to where they want to get to. Okay. Okay, so on that note, if we have a practice, <coughs> 10 minutes each way, just to run through the process,